everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with one of the decks that are doing quite well in the modern format right now. That is Uro Control. Now there are a couple different variants of Uro Control. There are this, and then there are the four color Omnath piles, which are Omnath Lotus of Creation, which is the one with multiple different landfall trigger things per turn. This one's a little bit more simple and a little bit more of a controlling deck than a mid-range deck. Um, obviously the differences are kind of minute, but you know that deck is trying to play to the board a little bit more. This one only really plays to the board with Uro and Jace. Everything else is either answers or uh, answers to answers. Uh, so this deck, um, it's a controlling deck. Controlling decks are trying to uh, make the game go a little bit longer and then win with some arbitrary force. In this particular case, it runs with Uro, Nature of Titan's Wrath which becomes a 6-6 with escape. And then Jace the Mind Sculptor, a very powerful planeswalker, uh, gives you card advantage, allows you to control your opponent's draw steps, can bounce things back to your opponent's hand, and then the ultimate wins the game generally. And then the other win condition in this deck is a Field of the Dead, and then playing a bunch of different land types. Uh, when you have seven, dif seven different land types, you start making it zombies. Um, even the basics in this deck are varied. You have like one island, two two islands, one forest. You also have one snow-covered forest and two snow-covered islands, which for uh, Field of the Dead purposes are different entities. And then you have one basic swamp. Uh, you're also running things like Sunken Hollow, uh, a couple of Mystic Sanctuaries to buy back spells. So deck overall is a blast. Um, it, these games do tend to go long and grindy with this deck, so that's something to keep in mind when you are playing a control deck in any type of format in Magic. The games do tend to go longer. You have a lot more decisions to make. Um, as far as this deck, uses things like Fatal Push, Blood Chief's Ascension, Abrupt K and Assassin's Trophy to deal with Planeswalkers and Creatures. Uh, uses things like Thought Seize and then Counter Spells, which are spells that uh, basically keep your opponent's spells on the stack. They go to the graveyard instead of play. Uh, you have Remand here, which bounces the spell back to their hand rather than um, it going to the graveyard. It also draws you a card. Uh, this card, when I first saw it as a Magic player, felt really, really terrible. But, you know, when you're you're trading four mana, like two mana for your opponent's four or five mana play, uh, you're eating up an entire turn of theirs, and you're also getting to draw a card. Uh, so you're furthering your own game plan while inhibiting your opponents. Obviously a very powerful effect once you get a little bit more into the game. Uh, Drown in the Lock is both a counter spell and a creature kill spell, uh, depending on where your opponent's graveyard is. Um, you know... You know, this can sometimes in the early game be a very effective spell. There are a few decks in the format like Tron where this isn't always turned on in the early turns, especially against their bigger plays. Uh, three copies of Force of Negation, which is a unique counter spell, allows you to um, exile a card, blue card from your hand rather than play its mana cost, but you can only do that during your opponent's turn. You can't use it to protect your own stuff during your turn. Uh, four copies of Archmage's Charm, very powerful uh, modal spell. It either is counter target spell, target player draws two cards, or gain control of target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. So there are a lot of very powerful creatures in the modern format that are one drops. Um, al also allows you to steal like random things like ether vials and such, which can be used problematic for this type of deck. And then randomly, uh, sometimes target player draws two cards. Um, there are some decks that try to like put their entire uh, graveyard into well their entire deck into their graveyard like dredge and oops all spells sometimes you can randomly get them with archmage's charm just killing them out of nowhere and then three copies of cryptic command probably the most powerful of the blue spells in the format um it is a little bit clunky though it does cost one in triple blue three copies of jace the mind sculptor we already kind of mentioned this is a planeswalker card that's one of your primary win cons and one copy of damnation which is called a board sweeper which is a very powerful um, way to clear your opponent's per creatures off the board. You don't care because your only creature is already the Uro, which you can usually recur, or zombie tokens from Field of the Dead. So that's what's mainly going on in the sideboard, or in the main deck. In the sideboard here, you got a bunch of different answers. You have Engineered Explosives and Damnation, both as sweepers and pseudo sweepers. Two copies of Vendillion Click, which is quite a nice disruption piece, as well as uh, clock. This can be an instant speed look at your opponent's hand. Uh, put one to the bottom of their library, they draw a card. 
or you can like look at your own hand, um, reveal a card, put it on the bottom of your library, and draw another fresh card. Like say if you're playing against another control deck or something, and you kept in like a fatal push, and they don't have any creatures. Uh, two, three copies of Ether Gust. This is a very backbreaking card against any type of green or red deck. So things like Burn, Primeval Titan decks, etc. Uh, Brought Decay, quite nice in pairing it with the one in the main deck for destroying things three or less. Two copies of Surgical Extraction gives you a little bit of graveyard hate without going in on something like Leyline of Sanctity. Allows you to remove problematic spells from your opponent. Two additional copies of Thought Seize. And one of the reasons why I chose this version of uh, Omnath Control, uh, Omnath Control, Uro Control, is the uh, addition of the Thought Seizes in this particular list. I do think that's a nice uh, way to kind of fight both axes of both counter spells and such. Veil of Summer is an interesting card. This allows you to make your own creatures uncounter or your own spells uncounterable, as well as protecting uh, things from your opponent having discard spells or counter spells, as well as having you and your permanents have uh, protection from blue and black spells for the turn. Then Blood Chief's Thirst is another powerful removal spell that can also be used to remove planeswalkers from the battlefield or more uh, difficult to kill creatures. Um, you know, there are a lot of creatures, there aren't a lot of creatures in the format that are greater than two. Uh, most of the powerful ones in the, in the format right now, Death Shadow, Tarmogoyf, uh, Scourge, uh, almost anything out of the Prowess decks, uh, anything out of Burn are mostly two or less, so it's a very uh, mana efficient spell to pair with Fatal Push. Um, but also it does get, give you the ability to kill things like Jace, uh, Five Mana to Fairy, Karn the Great Creator, etc. So... Very powerful deck. Uh, it's been a minute since I played a Uro control deck in Modern, so we'll see how this goes. You're back for match number one. Sand looks like most decks would not want to keep a five land hand, but this one has uh, Mana Leak into Uro, which is quite nice. We have a Field of the Dead to kind of uh, go towards. We have a couple fetch lands, so feeling pretty decent about this hand overall. <laughs> Probably fetch a Trium on one since we're not really looking to interact with our opponent all that much. At least not on turn one. It's the kind of hand that does get a little bit more suspect on the draw. Um, all right, so it looks like we might be up against Gruel or. Uh, Some similar type of deck, so going to run that out there. That way I can fetch another basic island in case they are on gruel. Could be on gruel or on Helion combo, both of which are kind of problematic. The Helion combo we care about a little bit less. So just do that, let that resolve. So I might not want to Uro next turn. Problem is we're still not 100% sure what our opponent's on. So. Um, so I can hollow since it's one of the more difficult cards to cast in our deck. So if I do this, play Field of the Dead, I can hold up Mana Leak next turn. And next time, turn, if they don't play anything we care about, I can um, Burrow with Mana Leak up or just play Jace, depending on the situation. We're going to have a lot more information as to what deck they're on. Okay, they're on Gruel. So there are two decks that play Arbor Elves in the modern format. One is, well, there's a couple different ones, but the two main ones are Gruul, Gruul Midrange, or Ponza, as it's sometimes referred to. And then there is um, Green White Heliod has been playing it lately. So we'll see what they play here. Something like Clothies is probably going to have to get countered. Season Pyromancer, I don't know. Could just be like Bloodbraid Elf too. Which looks like yep. So 
we will not be playing Jace most likely. Another Arbel is kind of whatever here. Uh, we'll just counter the Bloodbird Elf. Not the ideal counter spell target, but our main elite is going to be dead here real quick because of our opponent's mana situation. Um, so it's a card that I kind of have to cash in now. And then... Why didn't they... Alright, so change of plans. We're going to hold up Cryptic Command this turn. What are they going to do? Untap and bolt me? Feels like you'd be better off getting the one chip shot damage in with Arbor Elf. Yep. Possible I should have played the snow covered forest here. I was playing awful conservatively. More of their hands like very reactive, like maybe it's got um that's an annoying one. I guess I can fatal push plus whatever this turn. Sure. Pump if they want to. Some type of fire or something in the background, unfortunately. Sure. They'll push this and blink their entire turn. Okay. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, five, six. Land for the turn, that, and then we can Uro. I'll still encrypt a command up because Uro comes in. Um, allows you to put land into play. Does it matter which one? Yeah, I probably want to go Delta here so I can get a basic small if I have to. One's probably threatening a double spell turn here. One of the annoying things about Arbor Elf on Magic Online, you can't shortcut the mana casting. Yeah, Spyro's fine. They get to improve their hand quality here, but potentially make some tokens, but we blink it almost all completely with so a second season pyro and a bolt. We're very close to taking this game over though between the Field of the Dead threatening to be active and then Uro coming back next turn. So one, two... I think I get the regular island here. And then...
All right, so green, green, blue, blue, green, green, blue, blue. Actually, do this. Fetch. Mystic Sanctuary, put that Cryptic Command on top, yes, and we Earl. Leaving Fatal Push in the Graveyard, not that we have Snapcaster Mage, but it's a card we would more likely want to bring back. Um, I guess we shock this in so we can Fatal Push this turn if we're interested. But I think this game is just about over. This is the power of Earl Control Decks. So bring in Abrupt Decay seems reasonable. Ether Gusts seem good. Um, Engineered Explosives is like good against Arbor Elp and Utopia Sprawl, but not a lot else. I mean, I guess it's an out to Moon, so maybe I'm supposed to bring it in. Vendillion Click might be okay, although they're likely to leave in some number of bolts, and um, whatchamacallit's probably want Blood Chief's Ascension. Uh, Spell Snare? Their deck has some amount of like two drops. Like they have like scavenging ooze. And I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Spell snare could potentially go out here. Um probably shave an Uro. Thoughtsies on the play might be a necessary evil. Has Mana Link become too dead? Remand. Remand on the draw can be a little bit weak, especially when we're bringing in Aether Gusts. Shaven Archmage's Charm. Damnation's kind of a necessary evil. We go like this. The sand's a little landlight, but I do think we keep it. Like we have double abrupt decay. Thoughtseize plus ether gust. It's a lot of early interaction for their nonsense. I think I'm supposed to lead on Thoughtseize just because there's a lot of stuff that could happen. Um, so I would love to fetch a Tryland, but I don't think we have that luxury right now. Uh, so I think I'm going to fetch um, There's no Overgrown Tomb, huh? I guess we get Watery Grave. I don't like dealing this much damage to myself, but... Alright, so... Their hand's a little greedy. We'll take the Blood Moon, no, that's the card that can punish us the most.
Okay. Assassin's Trophy or Field of Ruin would be re... Well, Field of Ruin actually wouldn't be good because can't target basics. Okay. Or one of Assassin's Trophy would be kind of brutal for them. See what they do with an ether sprawl here. Utopia sprawl. Put it on bottom. Okay. Okie dokie. We're getting extremely greedy here, but. Get return this and pop. Hmm. That's kind of awkward. the elf here. <laughs> like Relic kind of sucks, but they're probably going to have to pop it if they don't draw a land, so... actually is really dirty but I think I'm gonna go ahead and Jason plus here Let's see if we can deny them another land sure we'll put that on bottom so that might be a, a bit greedy but I think you would put just pop this relic as constrained as your mana is. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. Nice. Back with match number two with Sultai Uro Control. Uh, this hand's a little awkward. I do think we keep it though. Uh, mirror match, delightful. So what do we grab here? Let's grab watery grave. Yeah, like the crap out of this. What on earth? All right, so we probably lost the game because of Magic Online bugging there. I meant to mana leak that. 
And instead, our opponent's going to get to resolve a Jace. All right. Sure. So there might be chess guy version going on here. Well, I mean, that's a hand. Bolt and Path are irrelevant. Shark Typhoon's annoying. Snapcaster Mage and Cryptic Command are the two main ones here. Um, just yield through the turn. Yeah, this game would have been completely different if I wouldn't if um, I had made sure mana leak resolved before passing the turn. them to answer the Jace one way or another. I was like our one way to win the game. One of the mis one of the things when you're playing Magic Online uh -huh. is um, any type of boarding issues can cause you problems. Not uh, boarding issues. Um, issues where your deck just dis or things blink out with Magic Online sometimes. So Veil of Summers. Might want to abrupt K. Question is we don't know like how many. Um, which McCall's they have going on here. 
Fatal pushes are not particularly useful here. I mean, they have some targets. There are some amounts of like shark typhoons and such. Uh, Damnation can probably come out. Cryptic commands a little bit awkward in the mirror match. Uh, da, 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 da. Before that begins, I'm going to reset Magic Online here. Feels like we might be uh, lagging a little bit. Magic Online will do that from time to time. It's one of the issues with Wizards programs sometimes is they do have a tendency to lag out. The longer you play them, the more of a memory leak they have. Arena at first didn't quite have the same problem, but it seems to be. Oh, come on. first come on all right this hand seems pretty reasonable basic situation is a little bit awkward but just basic force situation is a little bit awkward with Archmage's charm I think we just fetch a trium here Determine what path we're taking here. Tails end, force of negation to ferry. We just take the ferry here. <laughs> Looks like they're on aspiring spikes, most recent list. I forgot to play a land last turn. Yay! Here's to mistakes. Could play Sunken Hollow here, but I think I want to be able to Vendillion click. So they don't have Cryptic Command Mana, which is interesting. They could Tails on this, which is fine. Snapcaster tails on. Cool. Let's deal with this. Snapcaster mage. Have cryptic command, and I think that's the only thing we know about. two cards and see what happens. Potentially Mystic Sanctuary at back.
sure. Keeping our vans in, which we did as well. Force of negation in hand, which we also know about. Guess we let them brainstorm first. Trophy this chase before they get more mana. So now they'll be brainstorm locked. I guess Sanctuary back. Thoughts uh, ease here. That's a hand. Force negation, there's just no sense in pushing the narrative here. It's going to resolve. So we'll probably lose to this Ashiok. Yeah, definitely the, the faux pas with um, this just resolving is going to be a disaster. All right, moving on. Yeah, punting where I didn't play my land drop the one turn, I think might have been relevant this game. And then the situation where game number one, where I didn't mana leak that uh, to Ferry, just kind of... I, I, I hit auto pass instead of waiting for them to make sure the spell resolved, despite the lag. So Here for match number three, we're on the draw. is a stack weaver. So one of the things about control decks in modern, uh, this hand's pretty reasonable. Uh, we have thought seize, force of negation, that. Nat. 
So we get the River of Tears for Thoughtseize this turn. Put in his Mulganing. So if an opponent mulligans aggressively, there's a couple decks in the format that it could potentially be, or they could just have bad hands, obviously. A lot of it just depends on the nature of what's going on. Um, you know, Dredge and Tron are two decks that tend to mulligan a bit aggressively in the modern format. Um, once again, our opponent is kind of tanking on this one, so it's possible that they have a borderline six card hand maybe they're looking at a one lander or maybe they're debating like a four lander that um, has a couple relevant spells yeah it's, it's hard to like take too much from mulliganing but uh, one thing is you you play a format more often you can kind of like gauge what decks so prowess perhaps Mm. It's going to lead on Thoughtseize here. Gives us a better idea of what we're working against here. Am I about to get spell pierced? Alright, so. Same deck we just faced last round. Okay. <laughs> Take one of the two remains. The wildfires are annoying, but they're like, I don't know. They're not relevant, especially if our opponent has to burn them in the early turns here. Um, just like cantripping and such. Oh, they have a spreading seas. Okay, so they're a cleansing wildfire spreading seas deck. Sure. Bill Snare is quite nice here. Looks like this might be a Blue Moon variant. I guess we'll find out real quick if they're a Jeskai deck or not. Nope. They're just Blue Moon. I'm okay with this getting remanded, aren't I? No, actually, if we get remanded, we're in a world of trouble. So, grab a breeding pole tapped. <laughs> Didn't mean to fetch their main phase. Problem is, like, if that gets remanded, then I get I me. Mean, I guess I can fight through remand, but what would they be holding up? Why would they like fetch shock? I'm kind of confused there. Spell snare first.
So their hint is like all counter spells. Their hand is still cleansing wildfire remand. Play Uro Claws here. Hopefully draw an untapped blue source, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, I'd like to use this ability. Grab a forest. Man's a decent draw here. <clears throat> sure. Spells and our interaction here. Okay, it goes quarter, sure. source which is fantastic so they're just like LD blue control Trophy this, get out of the way so they die. Alright. So opponent has a whole bunch of LD 
uh, land destruction, assassin's trophies, cleansing wildfires, nonsense. The gusts are okay in this kind of matchup. Dilia click seems all right. Hail of Summer might be decent. Abrupt Decay might be okay. Thought Seasons might be decent. Fatal Pushes don't seem particularly fantastic. Kind of leaving some amount of interaction, obviously. Damnation probably doesn't feel necessary. Uh, I could probably shave an Uro. It doesn't feel like it's going to be great in this style of matchup necessarily. <laughs> Try like that. All right. Well, I mean, this hand is a bit on the slow side. Do you have turn one Thoughtseize? I guess that's all right. No way they can't LD anything here. They're cleansing wildfires in there. Spreading sea is kind of useless this turn. I think we're going to be able to summer anything here, but you never know. You got veiled. Show me your secrets. Sure. I forgot to play their land drop. We experienced that ourselves, round two. I guess they could tech edges. I mean, guess I'm okay with that outcome.
We are currently playing mono blue control versus blue red control. Sure. Should have cryptic commanded that uh, snapcaster mage. Yep, that was definitely a mistake. Because there's very few times you can leverage cryptic command very well. Do they have mana leak? Don't know any of the other cards in their hand at the moment. All right. Dillion click. So if we have to click ourselves or click them. All right, now we have a clock and we have some counter spells. So probably looking pretty good this game. Lincoln hand, which is a relatively dead card. Hmm. This does put us dead to a bolt. So 
So we have basically all their permanents dealt with, but... And would love to draw a Uru. All right, that's uh, that's gonna lock up the game. Snare negation back. Doop 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 Uru. Brainstorm, brainstorm. Back thought sees. Back. Fetch a basic forest of some kind here. Here comes Uro Claus, here comes Uro Claus, right down Uro Claus Lane. Alright, and our pawn scoops. Alright, we're back for match number four here. We are on the draw, unfortunately. This hand looks awkward, except one Trium like fixes our mana, so I think we keep this hand. Humans. Yep. Hmm. It's kind of awkward. All right, so I can just get Watery Grave and not feel terribly bad about this. <sighs> Obviously, Thalia would be pretty rough here. Uh, Freebooter could also be obnoxious. Looks like it's Freebooter. Alright, there goes our main leak. Conditional removal, good and bad. Possible I should have played Field of Ruin there just to be able to trigger another. Hmm, that's rough. Take 
Can't have for six. I'm liking it. Damnation, Mystic Sanctuary. Feels bad here, but I think we just use Jace as an unsummon. You play that before combat, then that doesn't make much sense. Comes reflector mage, sure. That's awkward. <clears throat> so taking six. Progression, well, they're gonna save us there regardless. Spell snare, yeah, we don't draw enough to. Alright, so abrupt K, engineering explosives, damnation, blood chief's ascension, or blood chief's thirst, I mean. We're interested in getting these commands out of our deck, at least one of the cryptic commands, potentially a chase. Force of negations are also pretty awful. Um, thought seizes aren't like fantastic, but they're okay. Dillion and click trades with a lot of their crap. Cryptic commands fine. Spell snares okay, not ideal. Archmage's Charm, potentially steal their stuff, plus draw a spell. Um, sounds hacka awkward. I would like to draw their lands. Feels like a Ether Vow hand, yep. Land is in fact a land.
need to draw a land to cast anything. Still can't cast anything. <laughs> irony of irony is there. Hmm. Alright, I don't know if that scoops up. Okie dokie. Mill Summer is only particularly good against Kite Sail. Um, I mean, obviously it can can trip. It's okay. It would be like okay against Reflector Mage against Uro, but I think that's a little too cute. Yeah, I think this is about the best we're going to get. Ether Gust is only particularly good against uh, the General if they even run it, and Mantis Rider. Opponent's well, only getting to six. I guess we keep his hand. It's got a thought season to stuff. Thought season to. Old Reign of Tears thought season combo. Either Vile Hand? Yep. Is the only one that's really relevant. I mean, relics like annoying. In case we feel we have to. Assassin's Trophy here.
Can I afford to take a hit for five? If you play to land this turn, okay. Say what they brought in Vela Summer? Why would you do this in response? It makes absolutely no sense. Assassin's Trophy, right? Yep. All right. Sure. It's like island being a little bit awkward here. Dog is lieutenant. basically no difference.
Yeah, I don't want to waste the abrupt decay on that because you know abrupt decay this and then trophy whatever else. Hmm. Well, we got got a little bit here. I do everything this turn. Explosives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this annoying thing. In general, it's annoying. Actually, it gets to exile Uro, doesn't it? All right, it continues to fight on here. Owner creates a 1 1 illusion. Cool. Wow. This is a tough one. Damnation off the top, please, or Uro. All right. So they get a 1-1. One, one. Don't know the woods yet.
Yeah, this router. Yep. Card, card or two away. Here we're back for match number five. That'll draw. Um, hand's a little bit risky in terms of like not having um turn one interaction for creature decks, but other than that, I think it's fine. Humans again. What am I pitching is the question mark. Question is, do we think we're up against death and taxes or do we think we're up against humans? Do, do, do. Looks like death and taxes. Have a third land sword of fire and ice. Could be they have batter skull already. Just let them do the thing. Turn here. Hopefully, we draw in here. Okay. Let's do this for three. So fortunately, they're limiting their own spell playability with the land situation they're in, but
Energy control, three other islands. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Take a hit for five. Sure. Absolutely. So I take to equip. Feels like they have. It's a card I could potentially be interested in. Should I find a way to bounce my land? I don't think we count our path. Just too awkward. They could go quarter themselves here. Hold up all the counter spells. Okay, 
a 3-3, three, three, they get a planes. That's probably a check mark on the game. Let's kill our token. Sure. <laughs> All right, death and taxes. Corrupt K, engineer explosives. Maybe these. Man, this felt pretty mediocre against them. She and Uro. Second damnation. I think I don't mind potentially seeing the first thought seize, but the second thought seize is probably pretty bad. Very mana intensive, but I do think we keep it. Force of negation, obviously not particularly good here. Basic Island, I guess. I'm just blow chief essencing this. Can't do anything else this turn anyway. If they have dumb dumb thing into dumb thing. Oh, what did I just let that resolve for? Force of negation too. Makes it all the worse. Oh boy.
Yeah, not force of negation that could cost us the game. If our opponent sequences poorly here, we might have a chance. It would have been so much easier if I would have forced him to get that ether vial. All right. No one in their cars in hand is a Yeah, nothing I can do about this really. Draw step.
Yep, punts were real. Yep, we got an ether ball. That's just annoying enough to our game plan. Please. All right. Well, guess if I'm not going to draw land, I'm thankful for removal spells. Okay. Okay. And I get nothing. Cool. Really, a flicker wisp on top of everything else? Of course, you do.
Battle of Skull too. I'm fine with that outcome. Oh, their deck is so annoying when it has Aetherval. So I got a four and then I'm just dead. Yeah, I need to tap the team there. Difference. I guess I'll find out in a sec. Nope, would not. Be back in a sec with the wrap up. All right, we're back for the wrap up with our first control deck in a while. Um, so. There were a lot of mistakes here. I'm not going to make uh, excuses. The very easily could have 3 2 to here. Um, I think the most devastating ones were the not waiting for Mana Leak to resolve before I clicked and uh, yield through turn against a fairy, against blue white, or against Jeskai Control. And then not forcing uh, the ether vial in game two against death and taxes, and then game three we just you know our hand didn't line up against what their deck was doing in particular. Uh, you know this deck's very powerful. It does require like always um, being mindful of what you're doing with passing turns, etc. Um, there was a lot of absent-minded plays that I made this league that certainly cost us. But as far as control decks, um, I think this deck gives a good example of what control decks are trying to do. They're trying to control the board until they, or control the game until they get to the point where they can turn the corner with a threat, whether that be Uro or Jace or Feel of the Dead. Um, a lot of other control decks have different other mechanisms. Some have con combo finishes. Some have just, you know, Planeswalkers or just bury your opponent in card advantage. Um, I do think the whoever put this particular deck together uh, did a very nice job of finding a good balance. Um, I think the Thought Seizes are a nice little addition to what the counter spells of this deck is doing, especially with this deck's vulnerability on the draw on game one, or on the draw um, with lack of one man of interaction, really, you know. You know, this deck's already jamming about as much as they can. 
So I do think that's a nice mix. I do think we should have easily 3 2 if I hadn't guffawed my way through this league. But, you know, especially if you're new getting into Magic or if you're new to the modern format, as this video is kind of being aimed at, as well as, you know, giving more Euro content to people out there. Uh, you know, if you like control decks, you have to be mindful of what your opponent's strategy is. And usually, control decks are something people gravitate to once they've played Magic a little bit. Uh, mainly because you have to have some idea of what your opponent's ultimate game plan is and how you can plan a turn or two or three ahead to uh, match, you know, whatever you're drawing to find, to answer their things. Uh, the modern format right now especially seems to be very mid-range. You know, Death and Taxes and Gruul are both kind of mid-range-ish decks. Um, the blue-red blue, blue -red LD control deck and the Jeskai control deck, obviously. And then Humans was an aggressive, disruptive deck. So, you know, we easily could have gone 3-2 or 4-1 with a little bit better, tighter play. Uh, maybe a little bit tighter on the Mulligans as well, but I think it was more... My play guffaws, particularly that mana leak on the Teferi that didn't happen, and the Force of Negation on the Aether Vial, maybe we would have, would have had a chance against that Triple E in an Arbiter hand. But, uh, yeah, these Euro decks are very powerful for a reason. You know, there's a reason they do very well. Uh, they're definitely the thinking player's deck, whereas, you know, people look at aggressive decks more as, you know, kind of a brainless deck, although they have do their own decision trees to them. Um, but, yeah. This deck is a, it's a blast to play this kind of deck once in a while. Um, I'm not sure I could do it on a consistent, consistent basis, but it is a deck that is, you know, fun to revisit on from time to time. So, anyways, this has been John for MTG Nexus, giving an example of a control deck in the current modern format. And this is one of the Ergo control decks that are doing well in the format during Zendikar Rising.